Welcome to another video tutorial from todaygamemodguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to have some fun with multiple fills using the Appearance Panel, the Fill Tool, Gradients, Pattern Images and Colorful Bitmaps. Let's start by having a look at the fill options available in Affinity Designer. There's the Solid Fill, I can change the color in the Color Panel. There is the Gradient Fill, the Linear Gradient, the Elliptical Gradient, the radial gradient and the conical gradient which is an odd one and needs a bit of playing with to get the hang of it it is a lot of fun though especially when you use it with a lot of colors and then there's the bitmap fill which allows me to use an image as the seamless fill for the shape and all of these can be combined with transparency Using the transparency tool, I can fade the fill. That way I can combine a radial fill with a linear gradient. All these fill options can be combined using the appearance panel. The selected rounded rectangle has a solid base color, a bitmap pattern for the stripes on top, another bitmap for the flower which i duplicated two times that way i can adjust the scale and the rotation for each of those fills and i can give those fills different blend modes from normal to soft light to say overlay for this one which will make the white flower stand out brighter than the soft light. I add a colorful version of the flower and a flamingo on top and I have a wild tropical pattern. Let's have a look at more setups. This circle starts with a solid red fill. On top of it is a yellow fill with a gradient towards 0% opacity. Setting it to 100 will cover the red as would multiple solid fills, but using a gradient towards lowered opacity allows me to stack multiple gradients on top of each other. I can start with a gradient fill from red to purple and then add the yellow and the blue on top with white radial fills as highlights. The pattern with the hearts is set to add cancelling out the black so all you see is the white hearts. When I change the image to a black and transparent checkerboard the add won't work. An overlay will give me a nice effect. I can try different ones or I can go with erase. This will cut all the opaque pixels in my pattern from the fill. The next circle uses a linear gradient as the base. The stripes are added on as a bitmap fill set to overlay with four radial gradients on top. The first one set to screen, then to vivid light and the white ones are set as normal. On top of that is a bitmap fill set to add to cut out the black. If I change that to a overlay or a soft light, the white will mix with the colors below. The last circle uses a bitmap fill as the base and a radial fill on top for the shading. I like to use the layer blend mode multiply when using shading. The same applies to this fill. I set it to multiply to mix the black with the color below. What might look very complex turns out to be rather simple with a radial fill at the base, a bitmap fill for the first texture, a second bitmap fill for the pattern and a third bitmap fill with the mandala design set to erase. You can combine as many fills as you like. Here I have a whole bunch of radial fills sitting on top of two linear gradients. Unlike layers, these fills have no separate opacity. So using the circles as an erase, I needed to have different levels of opacity for my circular pattern while the bubbles and the figures are set up as a seamless pattern. Now the main question is, is it just a gimmick or are there some real uses for this feature? 
One thing I could think of was a pattern design, having several elements to make up a textile pattern or filled with a pattern and a color or gradient combination that can be edited. Let's start creating a design with color, pattern and images. Start with a shape, for example, a rectangle with rounded corners and a gradient fill. Bring up the appearance panel. In here, you can add another fill on top of the existing one. I choose the fill tool and a bitmap fill and pick my bitmap image. With the fill tool, I can now scale and rotate the pattern and adjust the blend mode in the appearance panel. Set to overlay or soft light mixes the black nicely with the color of the gradient below. By right clicking on a fill, I can delete or duplicate my fill. I choose the duplicate. It creates another bitmap fill on top and I can change the image by using the bitmap option in the fill drop down. I change the blend mode of the fruit back to normal. Duplicate that fill and add another fruit. The cherries go on top of the existing fill. I created these fruits prior using the same template, giving them all the same canvas size. So the spacing between all these images is the same. When I change the bitmap fill, now the spacing between those fruits remains the same, making it very easy to distribute them evenly. Just like layers, you can change the stacking of the fills, moving a fill down or up the fill stack. I add the bubbles below the fruit and on top of the pattern. This multi-layer fill can now be scaled with the object but is unaffected when I change the nodes of the rectangle by cutting out parts, rounding corners or modifying nodes. A multi-layered fill cannot be saved in the swatches panel inside a palette, but you can save it as a style in the style panel. Bring up the category you want to save it in, select the object and, and choose add style from selection inside the burger menu. When applying a style to a new object, there can be problems with the scaling. Bring up the fill in the appearance panel and use the fill tool to fix it. Using multiple fills is a great option when you have a pattern with colors below that you want to be able to change easily. When you have patterns that you want to try different colored backgrounds on or use a pattern to erase parts of the design. If you like playing around with this, you might enjoy the multiple strokes video I recorded earlier. In this video, I use the fill tool, gradients, pattern images and colorful bitmap images to create this colorful multi-layered fill. I had a lot of fun playing with this feature and I think it's one of the hidden gems within Affinity Designer. Once you get a hang of it, you can create some really fun designs quickly and very easily. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like and a comment below and I will see you again soon.